lift up your hands and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to baptize you afresh and anew with his Holy Ghost and with his fire. Masu Talia Bakataya. Do you truly want more of him? Go ahead now. He that asketh, receive it. Ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the doors are being opened right now. Ask for more of him, more of his presence, more of his power, more of his grace, more of his glory, more of his anointing, more fire, fresh fire. Rekato libra no seteyane. Malisha liya varus ke prene keteya. Reto kapra naga de lebrono mosutoria. Rashete livra nege de lebrono mosutoria bakata. Resh kate livre nege do libra nege teya. Thank you, Father. More of you right now. In our nation, in our cities, in our nations, in our continent. More of your presence over this land. Pour your spirit out from heaven, O God. Retoli brana katelia bakashata. Let the heavens rain down righteousness. Let the heart yield up salvation. More of you in our lives, in our families, in our marriages, in our homes, in our ministries, in your church, in our careers. More of God's presence and power. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are still praying Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year on the, in the fourth month. 30th year in the fourth month on the fifth day of the month as I was among the captives by the river Keba that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. In the fourth month captivity ended for Ezekiel a brand new beginning began for him. Even in the remaining few days of this fourth month, somebody's destiny is changing for the best. Lift up your two hands to the same, my father, my father. Open the heavens wide over me this week. In the name of Jesus, over my nation, over my city, over my families, tear open the heavens. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray for open heavens. Open heavens. Let me see visions of God. God's power, God's glory, God's presence, God's anointing. Makike kotolibra niketea. In this fourth month, O God, over this Eurocon, open the heavens. Tear the heavens, O God. Come down, Isaiah 64. Come down with your presence. That the mountains might melt, O God, at your feet. Open the heavens over this continent, over Europe, over United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, over the whole world. Tear open the heavens. In the fourth month, the heavens opened, and a new song began for Ezekiel. O Lord, my God, let every form of captivity end this month, O God. Every form of captivity, spiritual captivity, physical captivity marital captivity financial captivity come to an end by the reason of this eurocon make kuto libra neke suto yanda o rashata braneke riabakata yanda baba open your heavens over me baba open your heavens over me Open heavens, open heavens, Baba, open your heavens over me. Baba, oh, Baba, open your heavens over me. Hallelujah, Baba, open your heavens over me. Open heavens, open heavens, Baba, open your heavens, open. Lift up your hands and sing it prayerfully one more time. Open your heavens, open us. 
over Europe, gone over this nation, over this continent. Your heavens over us. Oh, yes. Open heavens, open heavens, Baba. Open your heavens, open me. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the God of open heavens. And please, kindly be seated. God bless you. Thank you. A black Reno NL68 VJB9. A black Reno NL68 VJB9. I understand that you are parked at the entrance of the car park. Kindly uh, relocate your car. God bless you. And all my brothers and sisters that have parked on the roadside, uh, we are advised to please repack our cars. I'm sure there is a facility for parking so that you do not incur uh, avoidable penalty. God bless you as you do that. One more time, I welcome you to Eurocon 2022. It's our year of double. <laughs> Praise God. For every trouble of the past years, get ready for double honor. I say receive double honor from this moment onward. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is going to be a convention that you will never, never forget quickly. Hallelujah. So have faith in God and get ready for great and mighty things that he is going to do. I like to thank and appreciate our beloved parents in the Lord, Daddy and Mommy Gio, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. E. Adeboye, and also our continental overseer, Pastor and Pastor Ms. Dele Lowu for the opportunity given to me uh, to share with you for a few minutes at this glorious convention. Thank you, sir. I do not take it for granted at all. Glory be to God. I've been asked to speak for a few minutes and lead uh, prayers also for a few minutes on the topic, Signs of the End Times. Signs of the End Times. My test is taken from Matthew 24, Matthew 24, from verse 3 to 14. Matthew 24, 3 to 14. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Six, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Ten. And then men will betray one another and we hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow old. We grow cold. I beg your pardon. Verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. You and I shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Whatever has a beginning must have an end. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Please breathe upon your words and confirm the teaching and preaching of your words with signs and wonders. Take all the glory, my Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In the passage that we have just read, the disciples did not ask Jesus directly when the end time will be or will come. Rather, 
They ask for what will be the signs of the end times. And that's to say, what will be the indicators? What will be happening? How are we going to know that the end is near or is fast approaching? And how did the Lord respond? Jesus Christ went on and responded thus. Number one, he says in Matthew 24 verse 5, Matthew 24 verse 5, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. The way you know that a prophet is a true prophet is when his prophecies or his words come to pass. Have we not experienced it? And are we not experiencing the rise of false prophets? As a matter of fact, in our days, in our century, in recent years, more false prophets and false Christs have arisen than ever before, which is a pointer to the end times signs. We remember Jim Jones of the people's temples in America and the mass suicide that he led hundreds of his followers to commit. He once proclaimed himself as the Christ. We remember David Koresh and the branch Dravidians in Texas. Some of us from Africa, we also remember Jesus of Oyingbo in Nigeria. I've heard that in recent times, one pastor, Caleb, has risen again, who proclaims himself as a Pentecostal preacher, but denies that Jesus Christ is Lord, and also denies Trinity. Jesus Christ says to us that many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and we mislead many. The tragedy of the work of the false prophets and false Christ is that many will have ended up in hell before they know the truth. And this is happening. It has happened and is continuing unabated today. That's a sign of the end times. Number two, in verses of Matthew 24, Matthew 24 verses, Jesus Christ went forth and said, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. If you have not heard of wars or just rumors of war, as recent as the last 48 hours, when you leave this meeting for break, just switch on your TV or your news app on your phone and see whether you are going to hear of wars or rumors of wars. Thirdly, in Matthew 24, 7 to 8, Matthew 24, 7 to 8, Jesus said, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Can you admit to the occurrence of all the above in the last 12 months? The answer is yes. Diplomatic rows all around the world amongst nations up until now. Economic meltdown, recession in nations up until now. Up until now, there never used to be water meters in at least 99.9% .9 of the homes in England. But I understand that they are now about to start installing water meters. So the water you use now, so maybe if you used to take your bath twice a day, you may need to reduce it to once a day because your water bill might skyrocket. Pestilence. We don't need to be told that we are still praying that the pandemic will become history forever. Amen. Earthquake in various places. In 2022 so far, that is this year, I was shocked to read that there have been 3,840 earthquakes of diverse magnitude around the world. 
The fact that we don't hear that hundreds of thousands have died as a result of earthquake does not mean that it's not happening. Over 3,000 earthquakes have actually occurred this year already. Signs of the end times. Number four, Matthew 24 verse 12. Matthew 24 verse 12. I like the way the Passion Translation puts it. Jesus Christ goes on to say, there will be such an increase of sin and lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. Just look inside the church congregation. Don't look outside. Don't go too far. You have proof of this happening already. The church is becoming more worldly on a daily basis and the world is becoming more churchy on a daily basis. True or false? Exactly what Christ says to us. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3, 2 Timothy 4 3, the Passion Translation. For the time is coming and when they will no longer listen and respond to the healing words of truth because they will become selfish and proud. They will seek out teachers with suiting words that line up with their desires, saying just what they want to hear. And technology is making it so easy for them to seek out such teachers now. You can attend 50 churches in five hours on a daily basis if you want to, depending on what you want to hear. Those are signs of the end times. That is the Cairo season that we are in and that is the end time. So Christ has answered their questions. And we can see all that he said happening in your days, in my days. So what must we know? What must we do? What must be our response to the signs of the end times that we see? John 8.32, John 8.32, Christ says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free what's the truth that we must know what must we do with the truth number one truth jesus christ will come again say to your neighbor for me jesus christ will come again we believe it because my bible says so we believe it because when jesus christ said that he will die and rise again they didn't believe him then, but he did, didn't he? That's why we have the power of resurrection as the theme of this convention. So if he said it then, and it happened, you and I can bank on that truth. That if he says that he will come again, we must believe that he's going to come again. The second truth that we need to know and live our lives on is that we do not know when the time of his coming will be. Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So therefore, whoever comes to tell you that it is tonight or next year that Christ is going to come, that person is a liar. The same way, whoever tells you that it is not going to be tonight or next year that Christ is going to come, is also a liar. Christ will come. You never know the time or the hour. Over the centuries, all the so-called prophets and uh, predictors, or call them predators, who have predicted and given exact date to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, they never came to pass. Because Christ himself had said it. The time, the day, the hour, the year. No one knows. Only my father in heaven knows. And that is to say, it can be any time. It can be right now. Before I utter the next sentence. Praise God. Third truth is that, which flows from what I've just said. Is that his second coming will be swift and sudden. And there will be no last opportunity to repent. When that happens. 
Matthew 24, 40 and to 42. Matthew 24, 40 to 42. The, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what are your Lord is coming. His coming will be swift and sudden. Fourth truth that you need to know and act upon is that the choice of where you are going to spend eternity will already have been made by the time it comes. The choice will have been made. Whether you want to spend eternity in hell or with him in heaven, you will have made that choice before he comes. There will be no opportunity to make that choice when he comes. So therefore, if there is any time to make that choice or make a choice, it is now. This is your Kairos time of decision. Number five, the church you and I must focus on kingdom message now and not be preoccupied with speculations. Let our focus be on walking the walk and walking the word of God. Matthew 24 verse 14. Matthew 24 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then what will happen? The end will come. So until the work is done, the world is not done. Until the work of preaching the gospel to the whole nations is done. The world, W-O-R-L-D, is not done yet. And may you be the vessel that God will use in this assignment. So what must we do to ensure that the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world? Keep planting churches. Keep winning souls. Keep watching. Keep praying. And keep walking in the word of God and the paths that the Lord has set before us. Martin Luther once said, if I knew Christ was coming tomorrow, I would still plant an apple tree. Jesus Christ never wanted his death to be in vain. As the end closes in, please be assured. That the grace for more souls to be saved will abound. As the world closes in, please be assured that the greatest revival ever witnessed by mankind is also closing in. Romans 5.20, Romans 5.20 But we are sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The more sin, wickedness, and iniquity abound in our world, be encouraged, fellow believers, the quicker, the speedier, God is going to enable more souls to come to his kingdom. The greatest revival ever witnessed on earth will happen before the end comes. So assuming you and I constitute the last generation, before the end comes, then we should rejoice. Because we are going to witness the greatest glory of Christianity ever witnessed by mankind. I don't see excitement. Are you afraid of the end? There's going to be an outpouring of God's power, God's spirit like never before. We read about the Pentecost. The outpouring of God's power on the day of Pentecost. And some of us are still amazed at what happened. Can I say to you that greater things than that are still going to happen? Amen. Jesus Christ said, the work that I do, you will do. Greater works than this, you will also do. Some of us have not done anything there, the work that Christ did. But before the end comes, you will do greater works Amen. if you are ready. What, we, what was witnessed on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 is going to be a child play concerning what will happen as the end approaches. And I think I've seen a little bit of that 
I've shared this testimony with some. It went viral last year. It was on April the 14th. It must have been a Wednesday morning. I was on my regular prayer walk around where I live in Kent, in England. And I was worshiping God and also praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for our pastor who spoke about the power of praying in tongues. I was praying in the Holy Ghost as I was on my prayer walk. I will sing songs, I will sing in the spirit, and I will pray in the Holy Spirit. I mean, not too loud, but probably loud enough for someone that walks past me to know or to hear me. And then as I was on that, a gentleman walked past me. Clearly an Asian. And you know that I don't need, you know, just too much evidence to know if an Asian walks past me. Great, wonderful looking, handsome gentleman. Maybe in his thirties, well dressed, obviously going to work in the morning. He walked past me, and then having passed me, he must have turned around and he called me, said, "Sir." So I stopped and I looked back. So he came nearer to me, said, "Do you know me?" I said, "I don't know you." Are you sure? Have we met the boy before? I said, "I've not met you before." So I asked him the, the same question: "Do you know me?" He said, "No, I don't know you." I said, so what happened, sir? Is everything okay? He said, you just called my name. I said, I call your name? I said, I'm sorry. I didn't call your name. I've not met you before. He said, sorry, sir. You didn't just call my first name. You called my full names. I said, really? I said, I'm sorry. I didn't. He said, no, I'm not kidding. You called my full names. And he gave me the shocker. He said, you didn't just call my full names. You blessed me. You just said that the Lord bless you. You call my full names and you said the Lord bless you. At that point, I realized what happened. At that point, Acts chapter 2 came to me. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came down and the disciples were baptized, the Bible said they began to speak in other tongues. And pilgrims who came from all over the world to Jerusalem, they could hear their own dialect. Their languages, the Russians had Russians, the Africans, the, the Igbos, the Yorubas, the Dutch, they had their languages being spoken by these brethren who had never traveled to those countries before. And this gentleman asked me, he said, do you speak Bengali? I said, no. Do you speak Hindus? I said, no. I've never been to those countries and I don't know a syllable in those languages. He said, how come then? You call my names and you bless me in the name of the Lord. I told him, I said, sir, this is what happened. I was speaking the heavenly language. And I'm sure my God must have used my tongue to speak your language because he has a plan for you. He said, heavenly language, can you tell me more about it? It was the shortest, the easiest, and the most powerful evangelism that ever happened. Within five minutes, he surrendered his life to Christ. How glorious will the end time be for believers that are ready to be used as vessels of the almighty God to bring in these last days outpouring of his grace and of his power. If you are in that school of thought that says that the days of Pentecost are over, if you belong to that school of thought that says that power of God is no longer present, it is time to repent. What do I ask you to do? Keep your lamp filled with oil. Don't be like the foolish virgins. Be ready at any time. Watch therefore, for you do not know when it's going to come. The warning signs are already before us. If you are traveling on the expressway from time to time, you will have warnings about hazards. We already have warnings about hazards on the way. It is for us to obey and to trust God. Let's rise on our feet. The last 10 minutes that we have is to be used to pray. What do I say to us again? You need not fear. Tell your neighbor, fear not. The reason Christ gave us the signs of the end times is not to scare believers, but to prepare them and assure them of the escape, tragedy, of the escape strategy. In this world, it says we shall have tribulation. John 16, 33. But be of good cheer, I have overcome. 
when Jesus overcame, he also made you and I overcomers. When you are in Christ, you are out of crisis. The most important step to becoming an overcomer is to make sure that you are born again. If you are here today, I don't want to make any assumption. You haven't given your life to Jesus. Tomorrow might be too late. All eyes closed for a second. I saw the raw power of the almighty God manifested just by praying in the Holy Ghost that day in April last year. And that power is still available now. And it's the free gift of God. I remember that man asking me, can I also speak this heavenly language? I said, yes, you can. If you will give your life to Jesus Christ. He went rejoicing that day as the Lord poured the spirit upon his life. Are you here today? You have not made that decision of giving your life to Jesus Christ. This is the hour, the time of salvation. Remember I said, a second coming can happen any minute, any second from now. And it will be too late if you wait till then before you make that decision. Is there anyone here today who is yet to surrender their life to Jesus and make Jesus their Lord and their Savior? I want to pray for you for just 30 seconds before I lead a few more prayers in closing my session. If you are here, there is no date in your life. Listen to this carefully. No date in your life when you publicly acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Remember Jesus Christ said, if any man is ashamed to confess me before men, I will also be ashamed to confess him or her before my Father in heaven. We are before men, before women today. If you are not ashamed to confess Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and make today your birthday, your spiritual birthday, I'd like you to raise up your right hand, and I'm going to pray for you. Anyone here? You are saying, Pastor Leke, please pray with me. I want today to be my new spiritual birthday. I want to surrender my life to Jesus and make a public confession and acknowledgement of him as my Lord and my Savior. Anyone here, just raise up your right hand and I'm going to pray for you. Anywhere you are in this auditorium or sanctuary, glory be to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, my beloved brother. Jesus Christ said that there will be rejoicing before the angels if one person just one person is enough and christ will be dancing if you are the only one person on earth i assure you christ will still die on the cross for you that's how much his love is god bless you my brother i can see your hand god bless you my brother is your hand still up can i see it up i want to pray now god bless you god bless you god bless you don't look at anybody because they will not be around you on the day when you face your maker god bless you my father and my god i want to thank you for your sons. Lord, as they acknowledge and confess you as their Lord and their Savior, I pray that you give them brand new names from today. The mercy that all those who are saved receive, give them that same mercy. Write their names in the book of life. From today, begin to use them mightily for your glory. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father. Say, Father. Keep me fully ready for your second coming. Prepare me and help me to prepare myself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Keep me fully ready, Lord, for your second coming. Lord, prepare me and help me to prepare myself. The Bible says, prepare to meet your maker. Oh Lord my God, keep me fully ready. Keep my lamp burning, oh God. Prepare me and help me. Help me to prepare myself. Lord, prepare me. Prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, oh God. Oh, with thanksgiving unto you. Let me be a living sanctuary for you from now on. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are still praying. Say, Father, by your grace, I will not be a foolish virgin. Give me fresh oil always. And keep me burning by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. I will not be a foolish virgin. Lord my God. Give me fresh oil. At all times and always. Oh God. Keep me burning. Keep me burning. 
Keep me burning by your spirit. Keep me burning for yourself, for you, God. Keep me glowing. Makutori abakasata. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me born till the day is break. First Corinthians 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. We want to pray and say, Father, as I follow you, use me to cause multitude to follow you without turning back in the name of jesus pray to the almighty god as i follow you oh god make me a transporter of multitude to come to you to begin to follow you use me in evangelism use me in soul winning use me in discipleship oh god make me make me make me the transporter of multitude to your kingdom as i follow you oh god let me have multitude let me bring multitude to follow you masuka telebrane ketoya resh katelia varusa telebrano mokoto yanda yes lord i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Have you decided? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Lift up your two hands two more minutes say father feed me with your fire power to become your witness to my family to my city to my nation even to the remotest places on earth in the name of jesus go ahead pray for fresh fire fresh power jesus christ is here with us to baptize us with fire and with the holy ghost oh lord my god fill me with your fire power with your fire power to be your witness your witness to my family members that are not yet saved your witness to my neighborhood to my city to my nation even to the remotest places on earth Fill me, O oh God, with your fire power, like the day of Pentecost. Masuka talia barus kateya, yerebo shatelia, vraneke toli brakataya. Here am I, Lord. Send me, send me. Martin Luther said, even if I were to know that Christ is coming today, tomorrow, I will still plant an apple tree. Lord, even if you are coming tonight, help me to win souls before you arrive. Feed me with your fire power when I'm walking. Let people know that I have been with Jesus and let them desire to know the Jesus that I have been with. Masuke toli brakasata rika she le brono sun toria marus kataya le tuka pali brene ketoria varus kataya. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, Lord. Here am I. Send me. Here am I, send me as the Lord looks for somebody to send. Here am I, send. Are you here to be sent? Lift up your hands and sing that song to the Lord. Make the powerful confession. Let God know that you are willing and you are ready to be his vessel in this end time. Vessel of glory, vessel of power, vessel of anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name.
still in the attitude of prayer, can we just stretch our hands to our DCO, Pastor Leke, and just speak life, speak blessings, speak grace, speak higher anointing to his life. 